Think of a country where poverty, unemployment, crime, drugs, riots, prostitution, corruption, and illiteracy is rampant. You must be feeling terrible for this country, but you don't need to because this country doesn't exist anymore. You'll be flabbergasted to hear that this was the situation of Singapore in 1965. Today, Singapore is an Asian tiger in one of the most modern, highly developed, eco-friendly, and beautiful countries in the world. How did this miracle happen? Who is the hero of the story? In this video, I'll unveil the secrets of Singapore's economic miracle. As nobody, no group of men have got the will, have got the capacity to do more for this country. This is my country. Singapore is a tiny country with a total area of 719 square kilometers and a total coastline of 193 kilometers. It has 5.9 million inhabitants and it is one of the world's most densely populated countries with 8,206 people per square kilometer. In 13th century, Singapore was known as Singapore, which means the Lion City in Sanskrit. Prince Sang Nila Utama gave this name to Singapore after he came ashore and saw a creature he believed to be a lion. In 14th century, Singapore was known as Temasek and it was a trading port under the influence of Majapahit and the Iodu empires. Singapore was located at the tip of Malay Peninsula, therefore it flourished as a trading post for vessels such as Chinese junks, Arab dhows, Portuguese battleships, and Bajanese schooners. By 19th century, Singapore was a promising trading post along the Malacca Straits. At that time, the British Empire was eyeing a port of call to base its merchant fleet in that region. On January 29, 1819, Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, the Lieutenant Governor of Ben Cullen, landed in Singapore and established it as a trading station for the British East India Company. Singapore quickly grew as Entrepot's trade hub due to its free port status, its strategic location, and advancement in steamship and communications technologies. The opening of Suez Canal in 1869 and establishment of rubber industry in Malaya and Singapore in 1890s stimulated Singapore's growth. The construction of a naval base by the British in 1938 added more luster to Singapore's position. Unpleasantly, the British were growing opium in Bengal and processing it in Singapore using the Chinese workers who were away from their homes. Hence, they got addicted to opium. By 1941, there were around 16,500 opium addicts in Singapore. Singapore was attacked by the Japanese on December 8, 1941. The Allied forces surrendered on February 15, 1942. It was the largest surrender of British-led forces in history. Japanese occupation wreaked havoc on Singapore's progress. It was a harrowing period marked by acute shortages of food, malnutrition, proliferating black markets, gambling, diseases, extreme poverty, anime, and social breakdown. The women were raped and shipped under the label of military equipment. The Japanese surrendered in 1945 and left Singapore in a dismal state. Electricity and water supply systems, telephone services, and harbor facilities at the port were destroyed. The Britons' credibility as infallible ruler had been ruined. Consequently, Singapore witnessed the rise of anti-colonial and nationalist sentiments, epitomized by the slogan Merdeka. On April 1, 1946, the street settlements dissolved and Singapore became a separate crown colony. In 1948, Singapore witnessed its first elections which were won by the People's Action Party and Lee Kuan Yew became the first Prime Minister. In 1963, Malaysia was formed, comprising of the Federation of Malaya, Singapore, Sarawak and North Borneo. Singaporeans were not happy with this assimilation because of the agreement that 40% of Singapore's revenue would be contributed to Malaysia's government 
and Malaysians were also given special rights and privileges under Article 153 of the Malaysian Constitution. The disgruntlement led to riots in 1964. In 1965, Singapore left Malaysia to become an independent and sovereign country. In 1967, the British announced withdrawal of its troops but, since Singapore didn't have any defense system therefore Lee Kuan Yew requested the British to delay its withdrawal. Singapore even didn't have any natural resources. At this juncture, the miraculous turnaround began. The hero of the story was Lee Kuan Yew, who engineered this miracle. To begin with, Lee Kuan Yew made peace with neighbors and solved geopolitical problems. In 1967, he formed Association of Southeast Asian Nations to enhance cooperation in the economic, social, cultural, technical, educational, and other fields. To build up the defense, National Service was formed in 1967. It was mandated for every citizen, born after January 1, 1996, to attend National Primary School. To equip Singaporeans with essential skills and enhance their employability, vocational training programs were launched. Singapore is a multi-ethnic, multilingual, multicultural society comprised of 75% Chinese, 14% Malay, 9% Indian, and 2% other descents. In 1989, an ethnic integration policy was created for achieving greater social cohesion. The policy ensured a diverse ethnic mix across public housing and neighborhoods. In 1990, Maintenance of Religious Harmony Act was passed whereby a presidential council was established comprising of two-thirds of members from major religions such as Buddhists, Christians, Muslims, Taoists, and Hindus. Singapore introduced a racial harmony date celebrated on 21st of July every year. Kids are taught secularism, diversity, and unity in their schools with emphasis on upholding it in the country. Lee Kuan Yew was a strong advocate of cleanliness and good behavior. In 1968, he launched a campaign to make Singapore clean. Public waste collectors were given licenses, blue color recycling bins were deployed, and public toilets were constructed followed by Happy Toilet Program to keep toilets clean. In 1992, the chewing gum was banned and heavy fines were introduced on littering, graffiti, jaywalking, spitting, expelling mucus, and smoking. 4,900 plus street side vendors and hawkers were relocated to new markets. 26,000 plus families were shifted from slums to public housing. Singapore established healthcare funds known as MediSave, MediShield, and MediFund. MediShield is a universal basic health insurance mandatory for citizens and permanent residents. MediSave is a national medical savings scheme to cover out-of-pocket payments. Personal and employer salary contributions to MediSave accounts are mandatory. MediFund is the government's safety net for needy Singaporeans. The tax rates in Singapore are in the range of 2% to 24%. Additionally, there are vehicle taxes, general sales tax, and wealth tax. Singapore government also runs different profitable state-owned entities. One such entity is Timasek Holdings, which has a portfolio of 403 billion Singapore dollars. This conglomerate invests locally and internationally to generate profits. For sustainable economic development, the government did heavy spending to build world-class infrastructure and also opened up the economy for foreign investors. Paperwork was reduced, red tapism was eliminated, single window was introduced to boost trade and lazy and corrupt people were fired. To eliminate corruption, Lee Kuan Yew significantly raised the salaries of government officials. Moreover, a fine up to 100,000 Singapore dollars or five years imprisonment or both were introduced to impede corruption. Government established a skills development fund and mandated employers to pay levy into this fund. This scheme made Singapore part of the global supply chains for sophisticated technologies such as biotech, engineering, pharmaceuticals, petrochemicals, and semiconductors in 1990s. Lee Kuan Yew didn't want the development of a personality cult around him. After his death on March 23, 2015, 
The Prime Minister Li Xinlong announced in the parliament, in April 2015, that former Prime Minister Li Kuan Yu made very clear throughout his life that he didn't want any monuments. The critics of Li Kuan Yu describe him as a benevolent dictator because, to some extent, he was against free speech. Nevertheless, the lesson from Singapore's economic miracle is that selfless, dynamic, efficient, and visionary leadership can do wonders. If you like this video please hit the subscribe button and give your suggestions in the comments about what should be the topic of our next video. We would love to hear from you.